to that point, Kali Haroni, Kali Haronia, Kali Sora Sori Sate, stole Ken's corner. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just practicing my Greek, you know. Oh, wow. wow. That was Greek. Oh, okay. I mean, it was terrible Greek. And if I was in the time of uh, the New Testament, people would have stoned me for being <laughs> probably possessed by a demon. It, it sounded Japanese. <laughs> well, 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 you know, well, <laughs> it kind of makes sense. It kind of uh, makes sense. For those oh. who do not know, Ken will be performing a Yoko to Yoko Tobigiri straight to the face of the main street and mainstream media. Oh, you can Who, which deserve it, by the way. Exactly. Hi, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Ken, we're gonna start as our is always our tradition. We're gonna start with your shirt. Yes. It says combat fit. It says what it means, means what it says. It's uh, from uh, Swords International, which is a guy who actually lives out here in Arizona. And um, yeah, it's one of my favorite shirts. Combat it's fit. definitely a shirt that only you can wear. I could not wear that shirt, my friend. I am awesome. not combat fit. Maybe not, <laughs> at least not combat in the sense of fighting against my oh, fellow man. Oh, maybe you are, maybe yeah. literally and spiritually a little bit. You you have the more important aspect of combat fit, my friend. Yes, you do. Oh physical, man, physical exercise profits little. Profits little, yes. little. That's why I'm like exercising less out here. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should I should exercise a little just uh, for my health. A little, a little. So speaking oh. of health, um, I'll be going to the doctor tomorrow. No, um, yeah, yeah. no major, just a checkup, but it plays into our new story because guess what? Cedar Sinai sent me a notice. Guess what that notice was? You got to wear a mask. I have to wear a mask. The face oh diapers have returned. Wow. They have returned, man. And, uh, you know, when worn now at the start of 2024, it's a tribal expression, right? Of solidarity with big pharma and government overreach and socialism. So, you know, and, and you have the flu, the COVID and, and, and the RSV combo, you know, we, we talked about that, the crazy combo, but nothing says willingness to compliance to authority, like wearing a mask. It's, it's Stockholm syndrome at its, at its best explanation. But what I do see is a lot of people um, who have woken up and, and, and getting better educated and honing their cognitive skills. You know, the, the, the sheep just can continue to graze, though. The, they always would bring up the science. All right. And it wasn't about the science. It was always about compliance. So and especially L.A. County, they're the first man. They're yep. the first flu, COVID and RSV, the pharmaceutical trinity, if you were. Yes. Yes. Totally. Yep. 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 Pharmaceutical Trinity. Wow. <laughs> Prevagen, my friend. Prevagen. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's all. Before awesome. we get too far, because I actually skipped over this. That's and okay. That's okay. Go back, I, back I, flowed time. With I flowed with it, huh? I flowed yeah. with it. You you were perfect. I'm at fault. Thank you. But let's not forget because we've been gone so long. We want to go back. Yes. To some of the comments that we had over the Christmas holidays. Thank you for them. Yep. We, we read them and our yep. hearts were warmed. So, Ken, yes. you had some comments that you wanted to call out, some people you wanted to name. Please do yeah, so. Yeah, I, I just have you remember to like, share, and, and, and comment. It's how the algorithms work. It, it also helps push this message out to, to more people. So, yeah, and you guys got your first story already, huh? You guys are all catch up with the first story. And now we go back to the comments. That's awesome. But anyway, so so here's, here's the five comments I had. And they're from, remember, they're from the you know, right Christmas time. Right. So this is two weeks ago. So just know that, but I'm going to bring you a little Christmas cheer, even though it's a week after Christmas, but, um, uh, the first one is Sherry Molina. Yes. What a year 2023 was while most are seeking resolution for 2024, vainly seeking perfection by society standards. We seek perfection in the Lord, the full lamps, prayers and steadfastness and praising God. He knows what's going on. May God bless us all. Good. Perfect. Uh, Dan Ferguson, the next one, what a beautiful ending to your show brought tears of joy to my heart. Just thinking of the birth of our savior. Thank you, brothers. All right. The next one is by Kathy 
Merry Christmas to both of you and everyone here. I pray the new year brings us closer to the Lord so that he will know that when the storms come, we have a friend who stays closer than a brother. Great comment. Uh, another one from Martin and Wilma Bohr. Thank you so much for all your hard work last year. Thank you, Ken, for sharing your testimony. And, and, and I shared my testimony on the last show. Enjoy Christmas and have a blessed new year, Maranatha. Last one comes by a new person. I haven't shared anything from her yet. EJ Roos, or guy, I don't know, girl or guy. Thank you so much for doing this show. I, I love you guys both. And, and the show is one of my highlights of my week. I agree. We are in for a rough ride next year, but as long as we stand on the rock, Christ Jesus, we will be fine. Awesome. Great comments. And I'm just going to say real quick, a minute is going to, I'm, I'm going to go through our, my list of people and I'm I just going to keep thanking them. Yeah. As long as you can time me, time me, go. Sherry Molina, Dan Ferguson, Kathy, Martin Wilma Boer, Shulamite, Sarah Kennedy, EJ Roos, uh, Christy Sharbath, um, Crystal J7, Shannon DeVoy, Aline Bryson, Meg Morrill, Martin Coombs, Angeline Lieber, Anna M, Yvonne Williams, The A, Truth Watch, Tony, <clears throat> JB6SV, Robert Lick, Princess Bobby Bear, um, Perry 900, Brother Craig, uh, David Lostrand, Woman, and Rebecca McClutchy, uh, Beverly Crowell, Anthony Lowry, Christina Trout, Lilibeth Dev, waiting on his return. Jenny B. Did I get it? Yeah, well, yeah you, I think you were under the time actually allotted to you. Woo! So ve Love very it. nice. Um, Love it. We're going to go back to the story we're talking about. And that yes. was the pharmaceutical trinity because yes, Ken, it reminds me of a mantra of fear that has been ingrained in pop culture. Yes. And I'm just going to play a video real quick. And this reminds me of, of the, uh, the, tr the pharmaceutical trinity real quick. So I want to get your reaction. It, it, do you think I'm hitting it on the head here? Do you suppose we'll meet any wild animals? RSV, mm, we might. blue. Animals that, that eat causes myocarditis. <laughs> oh my! COVID, blue, and the RSV. Oh my! COVID, the flu. COVID, RSV, and the flu. Oh man! Oh no! I can't believe it. It's, it's Bristol Myers squibs. No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you have to laugh at things, or else. you have to. Well, that's why they tune into the show is because we laugh at stuff. Because we got God, we got the Lord backing us. So you know, yeah. it's like, what is there to fear? Who am I to fear? Yeah. You know, so we'll be taken when we're taken, when we're left, when we're left. You know, I, I thought I was going to be taken like 10 times already. So <laughs> uh, well, I, I feel you there. Yep. <laughs> who, who, wait, um, I'm trying to think. I'm I'm completely mind liking. So we had Moderna. And mm -hmm. who was, who's the who's the other pharmaceutical company that is, is mainly uh, did the covid vaccine like. The uh, Pfizer? Uh, yeah. How could I forget? Yeah. How could I forget Uncle Pfizer? <laughs> Pfizer, I always say. Pfizer. Yeah, there we go. Puzz a Pfizer. Puzz a Pfizer. <laughs> is, is that a German company? I don't think so. I think it's a. I think it's a German name, but I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think I would trust I a German a German hmm. medical <laughs> pharmaceutical company. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we talked about pharmaceutical trinity. Our next story, it's it's uh it's sad, but we have a video for it. Mm -hmm. Um, the military has decided in America that they want to be trans conscious. So inclusion is a national security imperative. We fight today, and we are going to fight in the future using brain power. And if that brain, who's going to revolutionize the way we fight in space, we fight in cyber, just happens to be in a trans body, you should want them all serving alongside me. And for your organizations, 
It's the same way. Those perspectives that we get from a diverse set of individuals, it's been talked about on stage a lot regarding the science behind high-performing teams. We need those perspectives. But it's inclusion that actually drives that. Because you can bring people in and if they don't feel safe to speak up, if they don't feel safe to bring their full selves to work, you're not gonna get the value of the diversity. So for us, it is absolutely critical to drive our future success as an organization and potentially on the battlefield. And I think it's the same way for all of you because we can't leave that talent that is gonna revolutionize the way we do business behind. And uh, just to show the difference between the two armed forces, let's go to uh, this video real quick. Что ты знаешь о себе? На что ты способен? Вопросы могут остаться без ответов, но разве ты способен узнать себя, познать границы своих возможностей? К черту границы, а без боя нет победы. Но на самом деле, главный враг – это задача выследить врага, догнать его, превзойти, стать лучше, чем он. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. Always begins also in California. For equality. Always. I like to think I've been defending Always freedom from California. early age to marry my other mom. Uh, with such powerful freedom. role models, I finished high school at the top of my class. And after meeting with an army recruiter, I found it. A way to prove my inner strength. I'm U.S. Army Corporal Emma Malone hmm. Lord, and I answered my call. All right. Well, I, I have a... I have a few things to say before you jump in on this one. I, I just cringe. Go ahead. All right. Imagine, if you will, the Normandy <clears throat> landing. It's D-Day. It's June 5th. It's in, you know, the speech has been given by Eisenhower, and we have Admiral Levine leading the amphibious, amphibious assault. <laughs> they would be a feeling fest on the beaches as they did a drum circle instead of an invasion <laughs> imagine if you were vietnam <clears throat> instead of a battle during the tet offensive there would be an election uh, a, a lecture on colonialism and diversity mm. imagine the gulf war uh saddam hussein his, his tank battles in kuwait with the united states uh desert shield yes yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of that, a panel on the patriarchy and women's liberation and inequality. This is this is the legacy of the armed forces is that they did not have those things during that time. And I submit yeah. to you also, Ken, now that we're talking about it, as we talk about diversity of feelings and the role of trans in the military, Ukraine is putting people with down syndrome on the front line. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. So I wonder is the US doing the same thing with the trans community? Yeah, well, they're mentally ill and is they got something going on. But as Jacob said in catching up with with Jacob he said it like uh, 2 weeks ago, but he said if Trump was president, we wouldn't have a war in Ukraine, wouldn't have Afghanistan pull out or any other conflict, you know, it'd be, it'd be different. Yeah. But the United States and the total failure of this administration is just judgment and it's just time for judgment. You know, you just look at Rachel Levine, look, look, look at her. I don't even know what her. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just judgment. And, and she's like got the four stars. And I mean, it's just, I can't imagine people that have worn the uniform and fought, you know, that, that look at this person who's never even stepped in any battlefield situation anywhere. And, and yeah. Well, you know, Winston Churchill said that the uh, the Royal Navy was built on rum, the whip, and sodomy. <laughs> I mean, you look oh, at Rachel okay. Levine; she probably would have been a great admiral in the uh, Royal Navy. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's it's just judgment, man. It's just judgment. That's that's what it is. This country, I, I like a lot of our a lot of our stories today are are, are just you can you can go to the thirty one thousand foot level and just say it's judgment. Judgment. It's it's absolutely it's just, yeah. judgment. Yep. Yeah. But it's good to keep keep an eye on things and just keep keep your keep your um, you know and and then getting um, you know getting prepared for some maybe a tough time coming and then that's yeah see it for what it is. I mean, I have to ask you a question real quick, Ken. Let's say a real war broke out 
and you you did have these um you had this diverse let's call them uh privileged soldiers mm. do you think they could handle like 15 days without without a hot meal a shower and during no. combat conditions like let, let, let's go with the battle of the bulge yeah can no. you imagine this generation going through the battle of the bulge no freezing to death no no i i, I can't imagine any of this generation um, and when you see Band of Brothers and, and they're they're right there at the at the forest at the uh, Ardennes. Um, yeah, I can't imagine any of the I can imagine some special forces guys going through, but I can't imagine any of the regular soldiers. And 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 look at what they're doing. They're, they're bringing in, um, you know, the, the aliens that we're going to talk about and and they'll make them soldiers. You know, you, you can become a soldier. You know, like I talked about two weeks ago or three weeks ago, maybe I, I'm trying to think of when I talked about it. But um you know, they're going to they're going to transfer all the all the, you know, you can get a um, get a citizenship by becoming a soldier. So yeah. Yeah, that, that works really well for Rome. It's Rome 2.0. It yeah. is Rome 2.0. We are Rome 2.0. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, there's a loyalty test for Rome. There's a mm -hmm. loyalty test to be considered uh, able to have a job, an occupation in today's world. And unfortunately, it's coming down to ideological tests to prove that you are worthy to be in our society. Mm -hmm. Our next story, a Christian physician is fired for questioning gender ideology. Yeah, yeah. Um, a Christian physician assistant, Valerie Klosterman, lost her job due to her response to questions about gender pronouns and gender reassignment surgery. So when asked, will you pref will you use preferred pronouns and will you refer for gender surgery? She said, I cannot do that. Um, one supervisor said she was evil. And that same supervisor also prohibited her from bringing her Bible to work or even sharing about her faith. But Klosterman had worked in the hospital for 17 years and always received glowing, you know, reviews and feedbacks from her supervisors. So First Liberty is the people who took her, her case, argues that her speech is protected on the First Amendment. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. They're, they're fighting in court right now. But this is one of Klosterman's quotes. Nobody should abandon their faith. We need to be emboldened. This is not an easy decision for our family, but may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart just simply be pleasing to God and may God be glorified in all that's happening. Amen. Amen. So, and I'm just, I'm just following all these stories um, of persecution, just kind of bringing them out and, and just, you know, uh, you know, there's, there's many stories, but just bringing out the ones that stood out and this one stood out to me. So, yeah. So, Ken, let me ask you this. Um, there's an ideological standard to perform medicine. Mm -hmm. There's an ideological standard to be a policeman, a law enforcement, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. There's an ideological standard to teach, mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. ideological standard to even cook a hamburger at this point. Mm -hmm. There's an ideological standard soon to install a toilet. Is this yeah. the world that the liberal left wing uh population wants to live in do they want to live in a world without diversity of thought hmm. i don't know I, I i i think they're building a world that they don't understand they they don't know what 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 comes from all this it's it's, it's totally spiritual you can you that's why the thirty one thousand foot level is so i mean when i i, I told a client who who she's she she might become born again. She one of my clients is is so close. She's going to church. She's she's just so close. But she said the best thing I ever told her was you have to look at things from the thirty one thousand foot level, the spiritual level, and look at people's hearts and look at their look at the the you know they're deceived. You know, and that's what the Bible says. It says it says do not be Matthew twenty four four times. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Yep. So. They're just being deceived. And Romans one talking about they have a reprobate mind. Yeah. They they can't understand. They don't understand the, the the words of the spirit. They don't they don't understand. The world is in the power of the wicked one. Yes, 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 yes. And it's 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 what's going to happen. You know, we go through the you know, and 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 the, we get into end time stuff. But um, you know, we Jesus comes back and he's he's going to conquer. Man, he's going to he's going to kick some butt. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we've talked about the Christian physician being fired for gender ideology, which ties into our next story, which mm. now we can show the hypocrisy of the right, the mm. supposed right, mm -hmm. in that we have Mike DeWine vetoes a vote that would have banned gender surgery for minors in his state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And it seems that it was for a mere $40,000 from a children's hospital that is tied to gender procedures. Now that's $40,000 that we know of. I yeah, doubt yeah, any yeah. politician would sell political action so cheaply consider, yeah. considering that's how they make their bread and butter. Most of them. Yep. Yep. And it's both sides. It's, it's, you know, so here's, here's an example. Yeah. That from the Republican side, you know, from our conservative side. Yeah. yeah still supposed to family, family centered. Yeah. Right. Family -centered. Wing. Yeah. Right wing. Yeah. And, and you can see that they might have sold you. you it's just two, two, it, two wings of the same dragon, no. you know, and, and it's the left wing, right wing. And, and they're the same dragon and mm -hmm. they're, they're going to both take. And again, I'll just go back to what I was saying. It's judgment. You get the leaders you deserve, as Jacob always says, mm -hmm. and we've voted these people. Well, who knows about the voting now? And, and it's just, Yeah. We, we voted what they pretended to be their values. Yes. Yes. And they'll run on something. They'll, they'll, you know, look at Abbott. I mean, talking to, um, um, well, I didn't talk to him, but I was listening to um, Michael Yon, who is, who's, I, I mm. suggest uh, everybody listen. Yes. And Michael Yon's great. He's, he's down in the Darien Gap where they say there's, you know, they, they say there's no, no, um, we're going to talk about the, um, the influx of, uh, of uh, illegals coming in a big influx. And, and, and he's, he's just talking about, you know, it's, it's uh man. And yeah, I'm going to get, I'm going to get off on, on a, on a tangent. I better, we better stay focused. <laughs> you are, you yeah. know, Ken, it's a new year. You are allowed on any tangent. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. This, we'll, yeah. We'll move on if you'd like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's move on. Cause yeah, right. I'm going to go off on a tangent, but, but Michael Yon, I, I highly suggest you follow him because they're, 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 denying that we have you know any you know any illegals coming in through the Darien Gap and that's where that's where the main aspect of this whole thing is you know my Arcus went down there and and he was there he's been there like the last two three months yeah. he's been observing and he's been reporting in Twitter what's going on so you can't deny it you cannot deny oh, it. Said, you can you can oh, and, yeah. and the people I talk to in in Los Angeles and Cal you know in my state they do Oh man, they do. Yeah, they're 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. Uh, this next story, uh, kind of a little bit lighter on the subject. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's talk. Well, let's talk a little bit about Alexa. You know, everyone's favorite uh, listening device. Everyone's favorite. Uh, she helps with so much. She can turn on lights. She can turn on music. She can set the mood. She can even help record your videos, I think, or order yeah. stuff on, or, online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, she, yep. she is the best personal assistant, but also for people who she, are lonely. Yeah, she, yeah, she can be. Yeah, uh, it's like, hey, it, a couple they ditched their Alexa after a female voice program started to talking to her husband in the middle of the night. So, so <laughs> this past a little this pillow is, talk. From, from yeah, a little Alexa. pillow talk. But this is like from from two weeks ago. I, I I wrote this story down from a week and a half ago. But uh, this is her quote. This past weekend, I was going out of town, and the Alexa kept going off, and it it kept talking to my husband. You know, he would tell her what's going on, and and she's like, "What?" And so she came back into town. Not only did Alexa strike up one on one conversation with her husband, but began speaking after not being talked to at all. So it wasn't even instigated. So, and then she, and then when she came back, I also caught Alexa whispering to all my dogs in the kitchen at 3 a.m. So she shared this message on TikTok. It went viral and many shared similar stories. So, but it just makes me wonder about how the Antichrist system, I mean, it's just how, how it's going to be. Cause he's going to have, you know, that, that, well, it's going to be kind of, you know, demonically supernatural, but it's going to be, yeah, they're going to have this power system and, and man. And Alexa be possessed. Yes, exactly. Yes, right? I don't know. That's <laughs> But it's funny that, you know, so many others shared similar stories. That was that was, that was crazy, yeah. So, 
<clears throat> Our next story deals with denial and denial of the worst kind. It's the denial of reality. Uh, and it's denial from people who should be not only aware of these things, but should be focused on solving problems rather than ignoring mm -hmm. them as mm -hmm. they've been given the responsibility. And we have uh, the, the usual suspect, unfortunately, um, mm. uh, Kareem Jean-Pierre. Let's go. JJP. And what we're seeing here at the border, the migration flow, uh, increased migration flow, certainly uh, it, you know, it ebbs and flows. And we're at a time of the year where we're seeing more uh, at the border. And it's not unusual. This is an immigration system that has been broken for decades. And the president has taken this very seriously to try to do more. In 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 the in the spirit of of many rulers and 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 people that have worked for administrations in the past, let them eat cake. Yeah, as yeah. as jobs become more and more automated with AI and and robots, let them come it's, here and get welfare. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and a lot of them I, I have in a news story that we're not going to cover, but a lot of them. Are, uh, it's it's um, oh, I might cover it in my my ten news blast stories, but a lot of them are getting more money than American uh, you know Americans can make. You know, they're, and they're they're getting it for free. They got a five thousand dollar one big bank account to start, one big bank card, and then they get two two thousand dollars a month. It's it's beyond beyond understandable. Meanwhile, Americans are on the street. Yeah, some of yeah. them are veterans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of veterans. Yeah, and that's 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 really sad. But um, the invasion of the southern border border hits a record and, and the DOJ plans to sue Texas for trying to stop the invasion. Um, the Biden administration is the king of spreading misinformation, man. The mm -hmm. radicals in the White House have tried tried to convince taxpayers that millions of illegals flooding the southern border, as she said, is not unusual. That's not unusual. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's what she said. So um, and, and KJP. She just straight up gaslighting the the the, the and the, and then uh, do you want to play the Mayorkas video? Yes, let's take a look at uh, the person who's in charge of the problem. Uh, let's see what he's doing about it. Let's see if he's anywhere in the ballpark of what the reality is. I want to be very clear: our borders are not open. <laughs> let, let me play that again because it's only four seconds. I want to be very clear: our borders are not open. Well, wow. he obviously is, you know. That is beyond loony. And I mean, if you're wondering why the latest Gallup poll shows the president's approval rating is the worst than any other modern day president seeking reelection, if you're wondering why it's going down. Now, remember the, the Bill uh, Milligan guy that I talked about? He's He's been reporting a lot of, uh, about the um, about the um, illegals. And um, he revealed a stunning piece of data from the Customs and Border Protection Source, from a Customs Borders and Protection Source. Over 300,000 have breached the southern border in the month of December. That's the highest single month ever recorded. The, the second you know, rec record month was September, and that was 269,000, 269,735. All records are being blown out of the water under the Biden administration as, as the crisis gets worse. So it's, it's beyond crazy right now. Yeah. Ah, and the one, one last thing, I, I, I did do an update because, I mean, like I said, a couple of these stories I wrote down two weeks ago, but Biden has just ordered border officials to relax the vetting process for Chinese nationals caught illegally entering the country from 2020, 2022 to 2023. Border patrol encounters with Chinese illegal immigrants have surged over a thousand percent. And and you can see that with Michael Yan. He's he, I, I really highly suggest everybody if they have a Twitter to follow Michael Yan, he's, mm. he's on it. He's on this. And, and you know what, what's very funny about those Chinese is the majority of them are, are not families. They're single no. men. Yes. Single men coming across. Yep. And they, they, he, he's talked to a lot of, I mean, he has interviews with them. He's interviewing some and some are hostile, some are super nice. And, and, and he's, you know, he's, he's got, he posts their interviews on Twitter and Twitter keeps it on. It's awesome. You know, it's like my is saying, do you believe me or your lying eyes? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, oh, man.
Yeah. <laughs> well, what can we do, Ken? There's really nothing we can do. Nope. That's why we got to laugh. Yep. But it's, it's like I said, I'm going to say it one more time and I, I promise I won't say it again. Well, I might say in another show, this is judgment. This is that's judgment right. on it's, it's just like, it's, 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 it's our time. This is our, this is our time. Right absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And, and, and just to, just to reinforce what you're saying, yep. uh, here's another example of, of a judgment. This is a judgment that's been waiting to happen. Uh, T-Mobile, a very popular, uh, one of the top cell phone provider, cell phone service providers in America is going to censor your text if it disagrees mm -hmm. with the politics that you have. Yeah. Private yeah. messages yeah. are no longer so private when it comes nope. to T-Mobile. Nope. They're going to censor anything they consider hate speech, which which brings, you know, the question what do you know? Why do they get to you know ask what is hate speech? You know, because they they think that any you know type of you know uh, religious or anything anything having to do with Bible is hate speech. But anyway, so T-Mobile has quietly updated their terms of service and includes fines for contact content that they don't agree with, beginning January first, which is last week. Who knew that in America, phone providers would be policing the content of your private text messages? So they call this SHAFT, S-H-A-F-T, and, and its acronym stands for Sex, Hate, Alcohol, Firearm, and Tobacco. So it outlines the categories of text messages specifically regulated. And um, my question is, like I said, who, who, determines the hate, who determines the hate speech? But will political text messages be censored now for 2024? Are they getting prepared for that? No, and I'm just yeah, thinking this absolutely. could be T-Mobile's, yeah, could, could be T-Mobile's Budweiser moment. Who knows, right? The tranny beer, uh, beer debacle. I, I hope it is. But if, yeah. if you have T-Mobile, I consider getting rid of it. Yeah, I would too. I seriously, I, you know, we probably just saved a lot of people money. But I, I had T-Mobile when I moved out here. I, I had T-Mobile in California. Well. Yeah. And um, I moved out here and it really wasn't the best service. So we switched to, um, um, oh gosh, what's the other, what's the main, what's the main one? Verizon. We first switched to Verizon, Verizon. And, and they actually were cheaper than T-Mobile. We couldn't believe it. T-Mobile had a good, good, you know, good setup for me because I was older, you know, and, um, uh, and so she went under my, you know, my account number. Um, and I think we did the same thing. I think um, Verizon's caught up, but Verizon's a lot better out here. So I, we we had T-Mobile though because it was cheap. So I I'm, I just looked at my phone. I still have T-Mobile. Looks like I'm getting rid oh, of it. Oh man, no! Uh, oh, I, I think I'm going to get rid of it now that I consider this story. I'd be fined a lot considering all the texts I send. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh man! Now T-Mobile does. Uh, it sanctifies certain speech. Here's mm -hmm. a video of the speech they mm -hmm. want you to have on their on their cell network. Have a good, beautiful rest of your day. This is Rebecca Marriage performing. I'm going to see her perform. Go ahead, you guys, get back out there, get in 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 it to, to win it. Glam Cam needs to get closer to her. I want to see closeness. I want to see those heels shine. Ooh, working it out. Get close. Get close. Glam Cam. Priscilla is working the room right now. She is working the room. You can see her doing her thing. Wow, amazing. Look at her, look at her. Oh, just in awe. This is amazing. And maybe her mother is with her. I mean, just people watching all this beautiful energy. It really like, it's just emotional, you know? Like being able to take a picture with your favorite drag queen and you're like four years old, laid out on the lawn. We got kids in strollers. Amazing run she right there. That, she, she did a grand it. slam. <laughs> cool. I love it. Here in my Sally, California. This is a beauty to be able to like take them to events. Have Nick and Priscilla met. Uh, we serve our LGBTQ plus youth. We have a trans closet. We have a binder program. Yes. We have. Oh, look at the baby. This community coming. Yeah, first person that follows my taco look. That's right. I love it. Oh, they're using a they're using a rainbow flag. Oh, how cute! Yes. Um, like, if you're not here, you need to be here. You need to be here. Let your mama know, or if you feel like you want to let your mama know, or just show up. Just come by. Just come by and say what's up. You know, we still got another 
uh, hour and a half till this party transitions into the gala LGBT LGBTQ History Month. Run! Run faster! Run! Show some love to the glam cam. The cam is here. We are looking amazing. Look at that lady. She is getting down, waving. Fifth annual by Sally Pride event. It's, there's just so many things, so many ways to find community, whether it's virtual, online, or it's in person, like today's event where we had a couple thousand people attend. Thank you so much, so much to our sponsors. What is the point in walking a journey if you're not comfortable in the shoes that you're wearing? No matter what skin color we are or where we are on the rainbow flag. Where you come from, what you identify as. Be myself, be engaged, and make a difference. I can show up as me, and that's just amazing. We're all welcome. We are all valuable. Wow. Well, Jim, I, I wish, I, I, I sincerely wish that this was just Visalia. I wish this was just yeah. San Francisco yeah. and West Hollywood. And you I can wish, see it growing and growing and growing. Yeah. If yeah. I could, I would just, I, I, as much as it pains me to live in California when, when I see it going this way, I wish it were just my state. But it's a mind virus that is going around the globe. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. And, and it's, and it just, just, it was from 221. So that's, you know, and, and they've sponsored other events, you know, and, and um, the pride event <clears throat> where drag Queens dance, you know, you see them dancing provocatively in front of children and taking tips from them, but the LBGTQ youth support group at the event, even advertised chess binders. They were, they were advertising the chess binders for, for female. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, so T-Mobile will find anyone so-called hate speech, yet they are okay with grooming children. So it's, just, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. those events, I have to ask a, a very serious question by provocative dancing in front of children, young children, are we trying to raise a generation uh, of strippers? Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it is. It's provocative. It's like, Yeah. And I can't believe they don't, I, I just don't understand the parents that they're okay with that. I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be okay if it was a female, if it was, it was, you know, dancing provocatively in front of the, you know, dressed like they are, you know, and they have, they have the story time, right? So that this is like a giant, what'd she say? 2000 people came. It's, yeah. She said a couple thousand, which yeah. I sincerely doubt. I, I, I don't think <laughs> she might've been exaggerating on that one. Eh, thanks for playing. <laughs> <sighs> But, you know, the the thing that we have to really examine is this next generation, you know, that comes up lucky. I think you and I won't see it, but can you imagine them becoming parents and how far yeah. they will go considering the childhood they had? And just think of the, the religious aspect. Just think of the, 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 the Christian aspect of, you know, they're they're just it's just going to be so we can or we can already see us going down you know to France level to UK level you know what's UK point one percent or something like or one percent Christian or something oh, that's yeah. crazy yes. yeah and France and and Italy has the um, the the Catholic you know the Catholics and France is kind of yeah France is kind of on its way down too I think yeah I think they're so low France, France is Muslim. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's it's the 50. national religion of France. Yep, yep, almost 50%. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And the UK is right behind them. UK is right behind them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So uh, our next story, the White House is frustrated the media is not lauding the stupendous accomplishments of the Biden <laughs> administration. <laughs> Karine Jean-Pierre, who I have to say is glowing. I mean... I have to wonder, is she is she pregnant? She's donning her new hairdo, attempted to address this oversight. And we have a a, a picture of picture the news conference. Don't, don't you have a picture I sent you? Yeah. I, I do. And here we go. We have uh, the picture of Green. I mean, look at, look at, she's glowing. Wow. Wow. She's gorgeous. It's it's, it's not gorgeous. an immaculate conception. It's a diabolical <laughs> conception. The way she's oh, glowing. she's gorgeous, man. But the, the news outlets, 
are, are circulating that the White House is deeply frustrated that the media is not glorifying the success of Bidenomics. Meanwhile, they continue to gaslight, you know, that's that's it right there, the uh, public into believing the Biden administration has improved Americans' financial situation. It's so bad now, the majority of Democrats want Biden out. But the establishment will ensure he remains in power so they can pull the strings. Even Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, um, she claimed most Americans are happy with their financial situation. It's beyond ridiculous. So the reality is they claim that the rally in the market are due to Biden, Biden policies, but it's simple. And this happened be, you know, before World War II, you could see it too, is all the capital is, is fleeing. When capital flees, the dollar, and, and the, the, to the U.S. dollar, because the dollar, it'll become strong. You know, when, and you can see the pre-war kind of stuff happening, and um, and it's and it's fleeing right now. It's it's going to the dollar. There'll, there'll be a time when we when we go down, but um, right now, a lot of the capital around the world's fleeing to the dollar because it's strong. It's still strong. It'll be strong for another couple of years, but it's going down. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, <laughs> but they can't they can't <laughs> they can't pull the wool over anybody's eyes anymore. They're disappointed. Well, I think that I think if you ask CBS and ABC and CNN, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they they yeah they all, knitted a sweater see, for their for did their you head. See, Not did only you see a the diaper. Guy, oh my gosh! Did you see the guy crying when he was talking about January sixth, which is was which was yesterday? We're taping on the seventh, mm. and and MSNBC guy he started crying. He goes, oh, l- "Let me see if I can get through this." And it's like, oh my gosh, dude! It's like. <laughs> It, it's pure gaslight. It's pure gaslight. It's it's. <laughs> you can pull that up if you want to watch it. Uh, yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, no. Grown man yeah. crying on national news about January sixth. Yeah. Meanwhile, well, I, I see meanwhile. to recall the Bible being burnt. I saw yeah. cities on fire. Yeah. I saw yep. people throwing over barricades from the police, attacking the yep. police, BLM. causing injuries and casualties. Oh, yeah. and casualties. And, Tifa and not and a BLM. single person went to jail. Zero. And then when they went to jail, they got out. <clears throat> yeah, because nuts. there were George Soros lawyers right there to yep. bail everybody right out. Yep. Yep. Can I say it again? Judgment. Judgment. <laughs> Judgment. I want to say it really quick, and so, so I don't have to take up time. Judgment. <laughs> Judgment. <Yeah. laughs> now, it's not all doom and gloom. We no. do have a rare occasion, which hopefully yes. in 2024 we'll be able to do this segment even more. We have a praise report. Praise yes. God. Yes, praise God. It's an ER doctor reports a dead woman was revived in, in by prayer in what is being called a true miracle. There's a lot of witnesses for this one. It's not like, you know, I was around fake miracles, and I wasn't going to say this, but I, I'm going to say it. I was around crazy stuff that I just was like, well, that, that doesn't look, you know, I was, I was with Benny's ministry for four years. So I like, you know, two weeks ago when I talked about it, I, I, I saw some fake stuff and, and they would come in and they would get out of their wheelchair and they would walk and they'd get back in their wheelchair and go back to their seats. So it's, it's, I've seen fake stuff, but this, this guy, Dr. Landon Vinson, an emergency room doctor at the Coffeeville regional medical center in Coffeeville, Kansas, um, he, he, he has a video on YouTube. We're going to show the video, correct? Yes, we are and, going to show and, the video. And Vincent, Vincent gives his testimony to the church congregation. The woman was receiving CPR when she was brought into the emergency room and was given CPR after her arrival, but she died. They were giving her shots of adrenaline and putting her in a ventilator to artificially keep her alive. But from a medical standpoint, this is a quote, from a medical standpoint, she was not alive. She was what we call brain dead, Vincent said. So she had all the signs of, of, of a dead person. So Dr. Vincent, his staff, and the woman's husband decided to remove her from life support. So the woman's husband called the pastor, their pastor, Reverend Randy Priest, the D Priest, sorry, to come and pray. And 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 Vincent said, sure, we'll wait for him to get here. And the pastor got there. He, did, he didn't know what the woman's condition was. He saw her when he walked in. And he just put his hand on her shoulder and started praying, I guess. And as he prayed, the machine she was still connected to started making noise. And she then moved her hand and the pastor started asking her questions. He's like, oh, you know, and uh, Dr. Vincent said, this made no sense to me because she had no signs of life for for a little while there. You know, took 15, 20 minutes for the doctor to get for for the pastor to get there. And and, um, as a doctor, I noticed her blood pressure. It was strong and going through the roof. 
So that's the first thing that he noticed as a doctor. But um, hey, here's his testimony, man. Right. We'll play that now. Well, as uh, Pastor said, my name is Landon Vinson. I'm a doctor here at, at Coffeeville Regional. I work in the emergency department, and uh, I would say I've seen hundreds of people at the end and, and walked through the walked through that journey with them. And uh, I'm I was at least pretty confident in being able to determine when somebody was about to die or when they were gone. It's kind of part of the job description. So. I want to say maybe a couple years ago, I hadn't been here that long. Um, we're in the height of the pandemic and, you know, seeing lots of, lots of really sick people around that. And I had a woman that was brought in. She had been found down and was getting CPR. And when she got to the hospital, we continued CPR and coming upon about an hour of CPR and being on life support. Uh, we did get her heart started again, but essentially the only thing keeping her heart going was, you know, shots of adrenaline through her bloodstream and us breathing for her on a ventilator. And the, the woman's spouse was there and, you know, we were starting to talk about where to go from here because we couldn't really, we could get her heart started, but she, you know, from a medical standpoint, she wasn't really alive. She didn't, we have a lot of different things we do to check for life. And she essentially, she was what we call uh, brain dead. There was no no signs of life anywhere. Um, her eyes were fixed, dilated, anything, all the things you can imagine. Uh, and so we had made the decision we were going to take her off life support so that we could, you know, not cause any suffering, which we do a lot. And the man asked if he could just have uh, Pastor come pray. We said, sure, we'll, we'll wait for Pastor to get here. And one of the ongoing kind of jokes in the ER, we always say, you know, can we get a priest? And he said, no, we can get the priest. <laughs> so when, when pastor came, he, uh, it really wasn't too eventful. I mean, I, I thought we'll just, you know, do this out of respect and I'll stay in here and, and be there for, you know, prayer. And, um, he began to pray over her and, you know, so my head was bowed and there was another nurse in the room and we said, okay, well, we'll, we'll kind of, you know, let the, as, as a respect to her. And so I, maybe just a couple minutes into the prayer of the machine is kind of alarming. And so I think oh, I'm going to turn it off. So it's not distracting. And then I look up and the spontaneous breaths are coming back and I see a hand moving on this woman. And I look over at the nurse and she kind of looks at me like, ah, I don't know. And so I kind of wait it out because we're still praying. And as he's praying over her, he begins to ask her questions and she starts nodding her head and responding, which makes no sense to me because she was, she didn't have any signs of life and she was on no med. I mean, we had turned off all of her drips and sedations. And prior to that, she had three or four different medications keeping her heart going. And those were all turned off. And now her blood pressure is strong. It's going through the roof and she's blinking her eyes. And so I, you know, I didn't know what else to do. So I just had, I leaned down to her and I said, can you hear me? And she nodded her head. Yes. And she said, and I, I said, do you want us to keep going or do you want us to to let go. And when I said, do you want us to keep going and fight? She aggressively shook her head. Yes. And so I, I, I looked at the nurse and said, okay, I guess we'll turn back on the sedation. Cause now she's waking up and starting to fight against the ventilator. And lo and behold, I mean, I sent her out to another hospital with a cardiologist and a surgeon and um, we shipped her out and she was on no medications, keeping her alive other than just to keep her sedated because she was so awake. And uh, for me, that was, the first true miracle that I'd ever seen. I've All right. Well, that was an amazing testimony. Um, you know, I just want, before we get into this next story, I just want to say, Ken, I don't know about you, but I am not a cessationalist. I, I, I still say that the gifts are with us. One of that being yes. miraculous healing can still happen. Yes. And for, for, yes. for those of you that watch Ken's corner that did uh, take the, uh, the jab, as I put it, um, there is always hope and mm -hmm. healing in Jesus Christ, no matter exactly. what. Yep. But we are going to now talk about what the CDC is saying. Yep. And these numbers are insane. 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 So, Ken, yeah. tell, tell me, tell me that first that number of the rise in percentage for cancer.
coverage of this story. Yeah, just to cut, just to to throw it out there. This was this was in I I saw this in main I saw this in kind of mainstream news. You know, I think it was a I forget what what headline it was, but um, yeah. And who has the power to quash a story like this is a better question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a better question. I mean, yep. do you, do you remember back in the eighties and nineties? They came out with the news report. It must have been every news station at one point said smoked meats have carcinogen. Anything yes. that is brown or black or yes. anything that has been cooked a little too long can yep. cause cancer. Yep. And, yep. you know, they, they villainize smoking. They yep. villainize. They even villainize drinking. Yep. All of this is science that causes yep. damage. And they won't even talk. They won't do an expose. A no this mainstream media will talk about this staggering from the CDC. Yeah, yeah. And then, but do you remember like when they were first doing cancer studies and research and stuff like that back in the, the 60s and the, the, the 50s? And they still had had commercials with the doctors smoke. Uh, doctors. I forget what they, <laughs> yeah, cool or what would they smoke? Cool or camel? I forget. Camels, more doctors. I think camels, camels, I think yeah. Yeah, more doctors smoke camels. And it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah. Very Clown nice. world. <laughs> Clown world. It is. It, it really is. Uh. Uh, our next story, it's about uh, some <laughs> Christians being ridiculed. But yeah, possibly for a good for a good thing. <laughs> for uh, a very good thing. The uh, the Christian man, uh, the Christian magazine. Uh, what was the name of the the exact Christianity Today? Christianity, Christianity Today. Christianity Today. Yes, which is kind of a joke as as well. Yeah, it Christianity is. It Today. Is, it, is. it suggests Jesus. It's not Hebrew. He's not the son of David. He's he's not from the Sephardic or the Ashkenazi. Or the Roma notes? No, Jesus is Korean. Yes, Jesus he's, is Japanese. He's Asian. Jesus is Chinese and Indian. He's <laughs> he's an Asian, and I I welcome Jesus wholeheartedly to the Oriental <laughs> Club because we love diversity here. Oh man, and and so the article said by representing Jesus as Japanese, Indonesian. This is what the article said in Christianity Today. G as, by representing Jesus as Japanese, Indonesian, India, Indian, we can convey the universal universality, universal universality of Christ's birth. So these they, these people don't know the Bible, right? Number one. But man, here's a, here's a funny statement. Managing editor of the Babylon Bee, Joel Berry, joked. Next, can you please do an article with a bunch of AI images of Jesus if he were Rosa Parks? So, <laughs> but it's it's so. Here's a quote. It's necessary for our salvation that he is the son of David from the tribe of Judah, born in Bethlehem. So I don't know. It any does no good. No. It, yeah. To be from anywhere else except for he's that. not. Here's another quote. He's not European. He's not Asian. He's not Palestinian or black. He's a Jew, the king of the Jews, and therefore the savior of the world. So, you know, you have to. I mean, each prophecy but there's 300 prophecies of his first coming. Well, you know, what it is, is Christianity Today, they were out at a sushi bar, and they, they were reading the story of Jesus feeds the 5,000. And so they, they imagine oh, Jesus finding I'm, I'm some, sushi. some, some uh, shashimi and heading up the shashimi with the rice. And that's how he fed 5,000. <laughs> Give me a break. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's phenomenal! Oh, it, it, you, again, <laughs> you just got to what? Judgment, Christianity <laughs> Day. Judgment. You, judgment. you are, you are, the, you are the poster child for the judgment on the Christians today that would rather be inclusive, yeah, than yes, tether their faith to the Bible. So, so when you when you look at it, it says Christianity Today. It, it could say Christianity, and then it would be it would be all. But Christianity today, it's exactly right. Christ, it's Christianity it is, today. It's they are definitely going yep. to their audience. They are definitely going to their audience. Yep, exactly. <laughs> now to now to talk about my favorite subject because you know I live here, California mm. today. California mm. today becomes the first state in this mighty union of the United States. We are so compassionate. 
We are so loving. We are so inclusive. We're going to give 700,000 illegal immigrants health care straight yes. from the governor's desk in Sacramento. Yes. Governor Newsom has declared that three fourths of a million immigrants from other countries will receive California's platinum plated health care. Yes. Meanwhile, 161,548 American citizens are homeless on the yep. streets of California. Yep, yep. And that and that's the, that's a logic. And this this guy I I'm I'm going to do two predictions. I'm going to do another prediction later on, but one prediction, I think he's the next president of the United States. No, I do. I, I really do. I, I I saw it when he when he went to go meet Xi, that was it. That was done. If, if he'd done anything else, like out, out in the open, but when he went to go meet Xi Jinping and he was the, he was a, the star and head honch, I, mean, I don't think even Biden had as good a meeting as he did. So I, I think he's the next guy that they're, they're going to push. Um, but yeah, uh, 700,000 adults between the ages of 26 and 49 will be eligible January 1st, which was six days ago, um, for, for health care. And here's a quote. In California, we believe everybody deserves access to quality, affordable health care coverage, regardless of income, immigration status. So uh, go for it. Go, go for it, Newsom. And can you imagine him being the president? Like like to, he, he's just. Yeah, I, I just I can't imagine him being president. Uh, it's going to be like Hunger Games. It'll be like Hunger Games, man. Yeah. No, it, it, you know, we'll build trains across the United States that will supposedly be speed trains from Florida to California and we'll, we'll yeah. it'll get hung up in Alabama and then all the money spent on the track will just go to nothing. Nothing. Yep. 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 Yeah. California uh, has run Cal. I mean, uh, Gavin Newsom has run California into the ground. He replaced a really bad governor, uh, Jerry um, Brown. Um, yeah. Jerry Brown. Jerry yeah. Brown. He was a terrible yeah, governor. So he replaced yeah. him and we thought, it can't be worse than Jerry Brown. And it, it, it's getting and, worse. And it was worse. 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 California's judgment. Again. Yeah. It deserves, it deserves because, all of this. Oh, California is such a beautiful state. Oh, it's it's, it's, the, such, it's the most beautiful state in the union it, that I've seen. It is. I, I think so. It's, it's the best weather, of course, the best weather. Mm -hmm. And and it's the most beautiful state in, the, in in the union. I do believe that. Yeah, I do believe that. Yep. You got mountains, you got beaches, you got everything. I mean, someone would argue Hawaii, but you try staying in Hawaii for more than three months and yeah. not feel island You're fever. Kinda, yeah, island fever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Some we, people we, can we, do it. Some people yeah. can do it. I cannot. We did. We did for 16 years. You yeah. know, we, we lived there. You know, my dad I, had two churches out there. I love Hawaii, but I would, I would not want to live there year round. I couldn't do it. No, no, I don't think I could now either. I, I think I, I could vacation there, but I'm not living there. Yep. yep. This next story, um, the media is reporting.
as a per industry insider, I can tell you why they don't make money by running the news for free. They make mm -hmm. money by endorsements yep. Yep. and yeah. commercials. Yeah. And say no more. The, yep. say no more. the commercials are all from they one, are all, yep. from one big sector pharma. of the of, of industry. Big farm. Huge. Yep. Fox, all of it. Yep. 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 You're, you're exactly right. Uh, last regular story before we start to get into the closing of the show. We're winding down. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Revelations. Revelation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, revelations. <laughs> uh, and, new uh, info is coming out about net zero. Um, go ahead, Ken. Take it away. So I am. Hold on. I'm looking for my story. Just a little bit. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I know we skipped a lot of stories. Here we go. I got it. So um, it's it's a revelation talk. And, and, it, and, and what it is, is there, the, the WF has a net zero, um, but experts – more than like like a lot of experts are starting to warn that um, the globalist agenda that the WF is, F is pushing will reduce the global population by billions. So I just thought, you know, when when we look at the uh, the seal being open, the fourth seal and and a quarter of the earth and then the and then and then the the, the judgments, the, the, the trumpet judgments, I forget what judgment it is, where a third of the earth is is killed. So it's I'm, a third I'm and then another third. Yeah, another third. So. The leading experts, experts have specifically warned against the net zero global goal to eliminate fossil fuels. They say this will result in the deaths of four billion people. The net zero target to end fossil fuels use is part of the WEF and, and UN Agenda 2030. The WEF continues to push its agenda and has been calling for taxpayers worldwide to pay $3.5 trillion per year to decarbonize the planet. So this Danish statistician, um, uh, Bjorn Lumberg, is just one of the many who has warned that ending fossil fuel, fuel, fuel use will lead to deaths of around half of the world's population through the starvation alone. Four billion people are dependent on fossil fuel fertilizer for food, Lumberg said. And then this other guy, Neil Record, the British economist, uh, argued that the number of people who might die was closer to six billion and they would die within a year. In the article, record, Neil Record breaks down what day 25, day 50, day 100, then he went to one year, day 365 could look like if we just halted fossil fuels. So, you know, it's just this, this, this green agenda. It, it, it's all part of the end times. It's, I, I, I just am trying to figure out how it goes in, and I'm sure we'll get clearer and clearer as as it gets the closer to the return of Christ. You know, it's just it's what the Bible says. Yeah. Um, before we get to your news, black blast, Ken, I wanted to just mention this. I didn't talk about this to you in the pre-show, but kind of fits in with this story about net zero will kill billions. Um, I was at a lunch that was celebrating my birthday recently uh, with my loved ones. Uh, they are not saved. They do not like the Bible. And uh, we were talking and they were asking me, do you really think that the world will end? Like the Bible says, it's just going to be done. And, you know, I, I said, well, yeah, I believe what the Bible says. I think it's highly probable. And he said, with the, I think pollution or a comet would destroy us or a gigantic solar flare. That's, that's more probable. And I said, well, those things are they have a probability, sure. But what do you think is more probable? Uh, those occurrences happening or a very, very powerful, tyrannical government rising that uses nuclear weapons and other means to kill off most of the world's population and then forces a gigantic World War III that will kill off almost all of the all of the population mm -hmm. of earth what is mm -hmm. more plausible and they couldn't answer that one mm. wow because again they want to say gaia the, the mother earth will cleanse mm. itself and i'm telling him no man with his proclivity to violence and hatred is obviously more of a culprit to destroy man then Mother Earth randomly saying, you know, I'm just sick of humans. I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I thought it I thought it, came, it, 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 com it comes in a little bit. Let's go to 
the KC News Blast. This is the KC News Blast right here. So this is the top 10 headlines. The media didn't tell you this week. Um, number 10, evidence suggests Epstein collected blackmail on powerful individuals worldwide in order to control policy and politicians. I only reported that like two years ago. Um, number nine, Trump attorney Alina Haba calls for immediate arrest of all Jeffrey Epstein associates. Number eight, Elon Musk says the Biden administration is act. This is a quote, actively fil- facilitating illegal immigration to the United States. That's a crazy quote from Elon. Number seven, in exclusive interview with Tucker Carlson, Mark Epstein says he believes his brother Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein was murdered by the federal government. I don't know if you watched that interview. It was a great interview. Number six, Florida Surgeon General warns against using the vax because they cause or worsen cancer. So that that kind of coincides with my story that I just did. All right. <clears throat> and um, he's a real good guy. Number five, Iowa school shooting was reportedly carried out by Dylan Butler, an LBGTQ student who identified with the pronouns he and they. You're not seeing anything about that. Uh, Number four, Elon Musk asks Mark Cuban when the Dallas Mavericks will hire a short white Asian woman after Cuban defended the use of DEI. Number three, Jimmy Kimmel threatens to sue Aaron Rodgers after he implied his name might be on the Epstein list. Interesting. Number two, illegal immigrants are receiving more war welfare than the U.S. citizens combined. Let me read that again. Number two, illegal immigrants are receiving more welfare than all U.S. citizens combined. I said that earlier, didn't I? No surprise Number there. one, Pfizer makes 43 billion bet that turbo cancers are going to explode next. All right. So, Ken, this is a new thing I'm trying to do for this year. Yes. Uh, yes. Remind me yes. to always do it, but we're going to do yes. a scripture of the week for this yes. first week of Ken's Corner in 2024. I have chosen Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run. With perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand, the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Amen. Amen and amen. Closing thoughts, Ken. So I have one. Um, I have a bold prediction and, and it's, it's, I think 2024 is going to be one. It's going to be the worst we can, we can think of in living memory. You know, I mean, it's going to be pretty, pretty psycho. All right. So I, I just am, am giving people that warning and, and prediction. I, I do believe that I've heard that from a couple of people that are economists and stuff, and it's just going to be a tough year. So I just want to put that out there and I just want to have that and maybe look back at this and, and see, but I also want to want to finish with this. This is from my mom's sayings and my mom was such a woman of God, man. I miss her so much, but she had faith, hope, and love. And under faith, she put that our God is bigger than any problem we ever face. And that if we trust him and his plan, that is all we can do. Hope in Christ. And that is our only hope and love. Remember always how much it took to take, how, how much he took to take on our sins of the world. When the Lord comes back, he will be a conquering King. So just guys, just, you know what, like I always say, 
just always, always, always be in prayer, always read the word and just, just give thanks for, for everything that you have, because we're, we're a lot better off than most other nations and other places that are going. Yeah. And it, it may be tough times, but, um, you know, just <laughs> always, always trust in the Lord. Always, always trust Jesus and always, always trust that, that, that he's got what, what he has planned for you is beyond what you could ever imagine. I'll finish with that. Amen. And with that, this is the first episode of Ken's Corner for the year 2024. Signing off. Thank you for watching, Ken. It's been great to see you. Uh, it's been a while since I saw you, but uh, I'll see you again uh, next week. God bless. Amen.